Revival is underway in a small Russian-controlled part of Moldova. Very few foreign journalists are allowed in Transnistria, yet CBN's George Thomas obtained rare access to the region. He brings us a report you won't see anywhere else on a pastor who's boldly preaching the gospel. Getting to Transnistria is no easy feat. CBN News began the 5,000-mile journey from the East Coast, stopping first in the tiny former Soviet Republic of Moldova's capital, Chisinau. From there, we drove along Moldova's southeastern border, where Moscow has recently stirred up political turmoil. We made our way through several Russian checkpoints to Transnistria's capital, Tiraspol, where a huge statue of Lenin adorns the town square. Why did God call you to Transnistria? As Why? It, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Maybe because I'm um, stupid enough. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord put a burden on Yuri Semenuk's heart to move his family to this volatile region. In my heart, I really, uh, I love people. I like, uh, that is my passion, serve to people. I love God. And I want to do something for him like, all my life. And after a while, God told me, Yuri, I need you in one place. That name is Transnistria. In 2000, Pastor Yuri, his wife and three children decided to move from their home country in neighboring Ukraine to Transnistria. The first seven years of their ministry as a missionary family were not easy. I was targeted by governments, policemen, KGB, and gunsters. The worst, of course, that is gunsters because they tried to kill me. They tried to kidnap my children. Once I was kidnapped, but praise God, God let me escape. This home video from May 2000 shows Simonok's first foray into preaching. Despite ongoing threats, he continued to openly share the gospel, often taking his message to areas controlled by gangs. Some gangsters, they became Christian, they became evangelical. Their wives became evangelical, so they hated. That's why they tried to stop us. In 1990, Transnistria broke away from Moldova to establish its own government, currency, and statehood. And while it's not recognized by the international community, the breakaway territory became economically, politically, and militarily dependent on the Kremlin. Russia has some 2,000 troops stationed here. Moscow's agents soon began harassing Pastor Semenuk, but he was undeterred. Each morning I wake up and I, I tell to myself, Yuri, you're still alive and you have one more day to preach gospel. One more day you can do something for God's kingdom. From those humble and at times nerve-wracking beginnings, Church of Christ Savior today is the largest congregation in Transnistria. Uh, we have unbelievable revival. So we're still alive. 24 years later on the mission field, we're still alive. Each Sunday, hundreds pack the church with many hearing the gospel message for the very first time. Semenuk says the secret to the church's growth is simple. We love God. We try to be very obedient to his words and to his spirit. And because we love people, we do everything what is possible to help people. <laughs> Baptisms are a regular occurrence. And during the week, Church of Christ Savior holds several youth programs for different age groups. <laughs> Parents also get their ministry time. And when folks can't get to church, members often hit the streets of Teraspol and neighboring cities, holding evangelistic rallies. <inaudible> Samanuk says the church often reports signs, wonders, and miracles following the preaching of the gospel. For example, it can, it can be cancer and cancer is disappear, or somebody has a problem with the vision, God fix their vision. Uh, deaf people can hear, I believe, all this power in the gospel and all these miracles happens because people preach the gospel that and got to equip us for gospel to preach gospel make disciples meanwhile cbn's orphans promise partners with church of christ savior to run their school of life project here in transnistria 
Each week, young people attend various classes, including computer skills, sewing, photography, English, math, and discipleship classes through Superbook. Some of the mothers take dance, singing, and cooking classes run by Orphan's Promise volunteers. Many who attend cannot afford to pay, so Orphan's Promise holds the classes for free in Seminoke's church. School of Life, we use the basement rooms, and children, they listen what's happened on the first floor, when they have youth ministry, teenagers ministry, Sunday ministry. And because that sound, they join to the, they just come to the sanctuary, and they join to the church, and after a while, their parents join to the church. So by that relationship with Orphan's Promise, we expand kingdom of God. While the majority here would rather be part of Russia, Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine has many residents concerned that war could soon be on their doorstep as well. Semenuk isn't afraid. He plans to stay despite fears of conflict. We know our calling. God tells us we have to preach gospel and make disciples. So nothing changed, war or not war, doesn't matter what kind of situation around, we have the same calling all the time. George Thomas, CBN News, Terraspol, Transnistria. Well, that pastor will preach, that message will preach all day, every day. Today, I get to preach the gospel. Here he is in a war zone. He's been kidnapped, has been threatened. All of these things have happened to him. And he says, well, today I'm going to wake up and I'm going to preach the gospel. Here's some really good news. Uh, if you're a member of the 700 Club, you're helping him. All of the, what you just saw with Orphan's Promise uh, being on the ground there, Superbook, helping the children of that church. It's wonderful to say yes. I was there, I help, I'm helping that wonderful pastor, and so thank you if you're a member of the 700 Club. That's you in action.